Welcome back to Gunner's Travels. We're so glad you're here. This episode, me and Chloe are going to be taking on Acatenango, a volcano in Guatemala. So before we get things started, I was actually hospitalized in Guatemala two days before this hike because I had this horrible bacteria infection in my gums and in my gut. So all of this to say that me and Chloe were both actually suffering from health problems and we felt incredibly weak and we were insane for even attempting this. But um, what you're seeing now is our hike up. It was about five to six hours, somewhere in there. Um, I mean, just straight incline. It was brutal. Now, you're probably wondering what tour company we went with. We actually went with Soy Tours, and I highly recommend them just because they actually do offer rentals for everything. So you can actually rent a backpack, and that's what me and Chloe decided to do because we didn't want to make our backpack super dirty that we use for traveling every single day. So we decided to rent a backpack, a coat, some warm clothes, Obviously, if you're flying to Guatemala, you probably don't want to stick warm clothes in your suitcase. So, yeah, um, definitely go with the rental company that offers those things. Chloe, tell us about this morning. How was the hike up? So the hike was pretty hard. We were the last ones, but that's okay because we got here in the end. It was very, very hard. The hardest thing I've ever done in my life. It was a roller coaster of emotions, but here we are. You can't really see it right now, but the blue sky is coming, so we may have a peak soon. So this morning we decided to hike up Acatenango, uh, which is a volcano. It's over here is the Volcan Fuego. This basically gives you a good view of that. We're actually really excited. I know we don't sound very excited because we're exhausted, <laughs> but the things, like the sounds this thing is making right now are just the most incredible, wonderful, amazing sounds I've ever heard. They're so eerie and I've never heard something like this before in my life. I'll try to capture on camera. It's just so weird. Also, our bathroom's all the way up there. A little plastic shelter. Yeah. It's just a little hole in the ground. You can sit on it, and then whatever comes out of your body just drops. Into a deep hole. Deep hole, 10 feet, I don't know. As you can see, the clouds are kind of getting away, but hopefully as we stick around a bit, we'll actually be able to see the volcano, and especially at night, we're camping here tonight, so we'll be able to see some, some things, some kind of lava or something. And also, uh, maybe you can include the little clip of our first impression of the eruption oh, that's yes. a, that you took on your phone. Absolutely. I, that's going to be iPhone footage. Not going to be the best quality, but I'll do it for you. Guys. But you can hear our commentary too yeah. in the background. Yeah. Oh my god. No, you can still see it. Oh my god. The noise. I've never heard a noise like that before no, in my life. Oh that's my god. The first we've heard. Oh my god. Chloe, where are we going right now? We're going to the toilet. Yeah, we're going to the toilet. Join us as we go to the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> Chloe, can you tell us about your first impression of the volcano when you first saw it? Well, I mean, the whole way up I was looking down and then all of a sudden I looked up and I saw the volcano and I just remember turning to Gunnar and going, Gunnar, look ahead. I was like, whoa, because we <laughs> hadn't seen it for like hours and then the last 10 minutes we see it and it was incredible. And can you tell us how you've been feeling today? Have you felt sick at all or? Um... Mm, no, at the very beginning because the sun is shining a lot, I was very exhausted, like the sun and my heart racing. I felt a bit lightheaded at times, but overall I've been okay. Just very tired. So it was at this time that me and Chloe asked a stranger to take our photo in front of the volcano. And at that same time, the volcano erupted visible lava for the first time that night. So it was just incredible to have these photos to look back on of our reactions as the volcano is spewing lava.
After dinner, we sat down in the dirt and filmed this epic eruption. Oh my god. Oh wow. After viewing the volcano for a little while, me and Chloe decided to lay down and get some rest because we knew we had an early morning the next morning. Base camp was extremely cold, so we actually slept in all of our gear. made it up. <laughs> First of all, would you recommend it for people? Akatanango. The average oh. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. If you're ever in Antigua, yes, go to do the hike up the volcano. Recommend Soy Tours. S-O-Y Tours. Mm -hmm. uh, great, great tour guides. We were the last ones of the group to arrive at camp and there was always a guide with us. So definitely recommend you have to do it. Even though it's hard work, you have to do it. It's a great experience. I can really yeah. agree with that. Okay, we wake up super early in the morning, maybe three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So we could watch sunrise at summit. So um, it was about an hour left of hiking, but I, they did warn us it's probably the hardest part because it's just so many rocks and very slippery, the type of... It was like very tiny rocks, wasn't it? It was difficult and pitch black, pitch black. So you, we had all our headlights on, um, trying to just follow the person in front of us, trying to get there. And it was hard because of course we were the altitude and we noticed a lot more people were getting sick. Some people were panicking. They couldn't breathe properly. They, some of them wanted to throw up different things. So everything was happening for this last hour in the pitch black. And all you saw in the pitch black was just these tiny little lights on everyone's head. <laughs> um, and it was, yeah, it was a lot harder. But when we reached the, reached the top, um, I think I just had a big moment of reflection because I... Especially because previous weeks, or for a few months, I wasn't feeling so good. I was going to the doctor, I would start a medication, and then I wouldn't have been able to do this. 
if I hadn't taken my medication, right? Because I couldn't believe that I put my body through this, that I was able to achieve this. Because the day before, it was so hard. It was so hard. I almost wanted to give up the first 30 minutes. But it's like a constant mental battle with yourself. Uh, but when you reach the top, you think, wow, like I, I've actually done this. All of that mental battle has come to this moment and I'm able to see the most beautiful and incredible thing that I've ever seen. Like we saw the volcano and the clouds were below it. I remember I have a picture and the peak of the volcano is sitting above the clouds. And to think that we're just at the top of this volcano was just insane. I don't know, lots of emotions. I felt very emotional, felt very happy, felt very proud of myself. And I also felt like, hopefully, I made my parents and my family proud. I, I had that thought in my head. And also I was very proud of Gunnar too, because he also had his issues, health issues before. Yeah, and we were both, we were both so broken down at that point. Like, yeah, I don't think anyone could realize like how mentally unprepared, mentally and physically yeah, both, unprepared yeah. we were for that, that climb. Because, I mean, we just thought it was going to be a hike and we had watch things we had watched videos that was like this is really hard but yeah. no one was preparing us for actually how hard it was mm -mm. no i we both felt nervous i remember that the night the night before but you don't really know until you experience it like what your body goes through and what your mind goes through so when you get to the top it's a huge relief because now you know it's going to be easy on the way down as well it's going to be it's going to take less time. You're not climbing and everything. So, yeah, we just sat there for a while. I remember me and Gunnar sat there and we were just watching the clouds. We were watching the volcano. Everyone was so happy around us because they, we both, we all achieved something together. And it was just a very amazing incredible feeling and i can't believe i experienced that in my life because it was yeah. so emotional and i remember like we got up there and like we hugged each other because we were like we did yeah. it together you know and it was probably one of like the greatest feats of our life so far like i i truly felt like this is something i'm going to share for the rest of my life you know and i remember we both said to each other that that and we had a conversation and when we reached the top, we said, can you believe that we've experienced this together? Do you need to rent a stick? Because you put your body weight on that thing and you just help yourself climb up. Yeah. Um, and especially in the sand, because it's so slippery, you you need it to staple yourself. Um, so no, anyway, we're on our way back down and it's dangerous. Well, not I don't want to scare everyone. Safe is dangerous, but it's slippery. It's slippery, even more slippery because you're going downhill and it's sand. Of course, it's going to be even more slippery. So we're going down and everyone's just in a single file because you can't be standing next to each other. You're just behind each other because it's very narrow. I remember, I want Dana to share his experience, of course, but... Um, I remember just being focused and then hearing like some commotion in the background. <laughs> the sound just going, and then all of a sudden I see a stick and I just see someone rolling down the volcano. And I'm thinking, and I look behind and Gunnar isn't there. And I realize this is Gunnar running down, not running down, rolling down, sorry. The volcano, but he's literally doing roly polies like boom, 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 like his whole body in like a shell, and he's hitting rocks on the way down. And I know we're laughing about this now, but it was very scary at the moment, and even scarier for Gunnar. But we do laugh about this moment a lot now <laughs> because we, of course, it happened to Gunnar. He's so clumsy, and of course, this incident happened to him at the top of a volcano so i want you to share because you were behind me so i didn't see you 
initially thought I just saw you falling beside me. So I feel like you should now share your experience of what happened, why that happened. I remember going down the volcano and I remember carrying so much stuff. Like, I don't know why I had so much stuff. Like maybe I had like a water bottle and like a, a like a pair of pants on my shoulder <laughs> for some reason. Like I don't remember exactly why I was carrying so much stuff. But mm-hmm. I remember taking that walking stick and I was like, that looks like a really like nice set rock to put my walking stick on. And I hit that rock and it was loose. And that is when I took my tumble. Um, and I remember, so I don't know why this is. I think I, I get it from my mom, but she's like, oh, if you're ever in a wreck, like, you know, just like act like you're drunk because drunk people never get hurt. So I was like, I was like, I'm just letting myself roll. I'm like, I'm just going to roll. Like, I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm just rolling down this hill. And I remember someone, I remember you, Chloe. I remember you being like, Gana. And then I was, I remember hearing someone after that being like, just stop rolling. <laughs> I was like, such a stupid thing to say because you, you literally couldn't help but roll. No. Like, it's just steep like that. And um, yeah, I do remember just going, Gana. And then everyone, I kid you not, there's about 50 people in the single file from back there all the way down there. And everyone just stopped. Everyone just stopped and was looking. There wasn't a guide in sight. I had no idea where our tour guide was or one of them. And everyone just stopped and went like, and then luckily some rock, well, not luckily because you've got bruises and you, I mean, you hurt yourself from the rocks, but luckily a rock stopped you from rolling any further. And then I just remember a lady further down the line saying, um, no, take your time, take your time, but stand up too quickly. Be careful. And then this French guy in front of me, he looked at me. I was like, that's my friend. And then he just started immediately. He was with someone. He immediately started going down. Like he was tall as well. So I just remember his long legs just getting down quicker than I could. I could just about reach your stick. <laughs> like that you dropped on the way down. Because also it's very slippery. So this French guy came and like helped you, didn't he? To no, and oh. he like folded my pants. You remember I had pants around my yeah. shoulders or whatever. He like folded my pants. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I felt like my other pair of pants came around my ankles. Like I remember. I remember. I tried to get up. Like I tried to get up really quickly. That lady was like, "No, no, like chill out, calm down. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. take your time." And I just flopped back down. I was like. I'm not I'm not pushing myself right now. I'm yeah. gonna take a deep breath and then I'll regain energy and then I'll be back to normal soon. And the worst part was like that wasn't even my final fall down the volcano. Like I fell down so many times. Yeah. Hiking back down Akatanango, like I I don't know what was wrong, whether it was my shoes being super slippery, but I remember you drink your shoes run. I was sure. trying to run to try to like not fall. And you were yeah. perfect. Well, I also didn't have the best shoes either. I just didn't, most of people had hiking shoes. Me and Gunnar had like running shoes. I just had normal Nike shoes, but I did not want to fall. So I don't know how, but I didn't fall. But I was running down that hill. I was running. I was going like boom, 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 boom. I'd find the tree and I'd just run into it and grab it to stop me from running. Because you would lose control when you were running down the hill because it was so steep. And also we spoke about the sand at the top, but then when you go further down, it's more like a mud sand type. But that was also very slippery and just, oh, you need something to cover your face as well because you will inhale so much sand and dirt around your nose. There's photos of me and Gunnar. I, you had it around your mouth, in your teeth, I remember, and I had it in my nose, all around my nose. Oh my no. God, we were disgusting. But I remember getting dropped off at the hostel, you know, like after the, the tour, and then just being like, oh my gosh, a shower. 
And I remember just being in that shit. That was one of the best showers in my life. The just amount of sand that came off. Yeah. I mean, we were disgusting. And I mean, we obviously had to stay like that overnight. Like, you know, we hiked up. We stayed in our gear all night, too. Like, we spent that the night so in our gear. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we were like, I mean, we were dirty. But that, yeah. that um, hike up was crazy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it and got some good advice. Please don't hesitate to like and subscribe. If you've watched this far, you might as well. And I've also included our handles on Instagram, both me and Chloe. So um, until next time, this is Gunner Travis.